Businesses employ natural resources in the creation of goods and services and generate waste that is disposed of in the environment. This chapter examines the intensity and importance of environmental concerns caused by economic activity, as well as the difficulty of protecting and preserving the world as humanity's sole refuge. This is Business and Ecology. Ecology is the science of the interrelationships among organisms and their environment. It implies that an interdependence exists among all entities in the environment. We must not forget that human beings are part of nature and thus intricately connected to and interrelated with the natural environment. Every living organism affects its environment, yet Homo sapiens possesses the power to dramatically upset the stability of natural ecosystems. In particular, many human commercial activities have unpredictable and disrupted consequences for ecosystem, like using pesticides and establishing oil fields. Even so, enterprises are significant producers, and their certain invasions are justified. Corporations must still avoid environmentally damaging practices, tactics, and regulations. The business industry should not be hesitant to recognize its responsibilities. We do not need to tell the story, but we must separate the commercial mindsets that led to indifference. Now let's talk about the dimensions of sociological problems. According to Rowan, the social problem is poor behavior or state, a lack of money for food, housing, and clothing endangers individuals. Its skill is dependent on their existence and public awareness. There are objective and subjective social elements. Objective elements are defining characteristics of poverty, such as lack of food, healthcare, and education, as well as high impact mortality and illiteracy. The subjective element is the public's concern for objective problems, its desire to resolve them, and its belief that it is possible. Now, let us find out what social structure is. Social structure refers to how society is organized, culture refers to the knowledge, ways of thinking, and shared understandings of behavior, and physical objects that characterize a people's way of life. The elements of culture particularly are important for understanding social problems, our values, norms, beliefs, and symbols. People's value can influence whether they view specific conditions or behaviors as social problems. A subculture refers to a specific set of values, norms, beliefs, and symbols, behaviors shared by a group of people unique enough to significantly distinguish them from the other's members of a culture. Traditional attitudes of business towards the environment, spillovers or externalities, pursuit of private interest at the expense of the commons and the view of environment as a free good that can be consumed without limit have combined with an ignorance of ecology to create serious environmental problems. Pollution and the depletion of natural sources are two aspects of the same problem. Environmental ethics and the moral and social obligations of business to the environment. Environmental ethics is the study of relationship of human beings to and also the value and moral status of the environment. Is it morally acceptable for farmers in non-industrial countries to practice slash and burn techniques to clear areas for agriculture? Does a mining company have a moral obligation to restore the land form and surface ecology? As already mentioned, some enterprises contend that their environmental responsibilities are limited to what the law demands and what would be profitable. However, ethicists often claim that to develop more compelling justifications for environmental responsibility, firms must look beyond profit goals and regulatory requirements. We will discuss three of these theories, each of which leads to a distinct understanding of how firms should behave in terms of the environment. First is the environmental anthropocentric or human-centered. Second is the animal rights perspective that focuses on the moral obligation humans have to animals. And lastly is the ecocentrism that entails the responsibility to ensure that the environment on Earth stays friendly for maintaining human existence and that its resources and attractiveness are protected so that life on Earth remains pleasant. 
useless moral and social obligations to the environment. A duty is a commitment to carry out a specific action. Despite the fact that obligations have many origins, they all contain a moral component. Obligations can be divided into two categories. Prohibitions that outline what we should and should not do, and obligations are directives that outline what we must or ought to accomplish. Laws, promises, and principles are the three main sources of moral responsibilities, wherein law-based moral obligation, it is part of the presumptive social compact of a civilized society that good citizens have a moral and legal commitment to uphold the law. Promise-based moral obligation Based on a promise or agreement, while not all agreements are legally binding, honorable people and organizations understand and uphold their moral commitment to carry through on their pledges. Moral principle as the basis moral obligation. Moral principle, a code of conduct that predates all laws and agreements. Morality can be dictated by religious teaching or inferred from reasoning and philosophy. Upper give 10 initiatives that business can take to protect the environment. Reduce the air and water pollution. Adapt high environmental protection standards and ensure that they are implemented. Top management must make a genuine commitment to cultivate, sustain, and develop a work culture. Ensures that all employees from all divisions shares the determination. Developing clear-cut policies and programs to help employees develop their skill for pollution control. Conform to the government laws and regulations. Involvement in various government management programs. A fair assessment of costs and benefits. Engage in pollution control programs. Encourage the use of green energy to reduce the use of fossil fuels. The Baddes Principle The Baddes Principle, subsequently called the Series Principle, are the set of 10 guidelines designed to regulate and monitor the conduct of corporations in matters related to the environment. They were drawn up in 1989 after the Exxon Valdez oil tanker disaster, which front around the spill more than 10 million gallons of crude of the Alaskan coast. In 1996, Aveda became the first beauty company to adopt the series principle. Some of the other early series signatories include American Airlines, Bank of the America, Baxter International, and so on. Why companies should adopt the Valdez principles? There are four main advantages that every corporation must consider. First, the Valdez principles promote green consumerism among its consumer and shareholders. This means that we can sustain the use of natural resources that reduces the chances of destroying the natural environment. Second, in accordance with the Valdez principles, corporations who adopt these principles will experience reduced costs associated with hauling fees resulting to potential revenues by means of recycling. Third, corporations that adopt these principles may avoid having financially devastating environmental disasters. And last but not the least, adopting the Valdez principles can help a company earn a favorable investment coming from the corporation of the Ceres members. The growth of this problem across the world is mostly related to corporate operations. Although individuals gain from the usage of these resources and contemporary businesses rely on their availability, Mankind will eventually go back to a life based on small scale farming. Once these resources are gone, there's no way they can be replenished.